This is the Wealth Ability Show with Tom Wheelwright. Way more money, way less taxes. Welcome to the Wealth Ability Show, where we learn how to make way more money and pay way less taxes. This is Tom Wheelwright. I'm your host. And today we have a, such an exciting program. I have a very special guest. We're going to talk about what if you could build massive amounts of wealth and never pay taxes. I mean, truly tax-free wealth. What we're going to do today is we're actually going to, you're going to want to listen to every single second of this program because my guest and I, who's a specialist in this area, we're going to guide you through the steps to invest completely tax-free even when you're taking cash out of your investment. Even when you've got cash flow, we're going to investing tax-free. So this is very exciting. And even... By the way, even when you die, you're going to get it tax-free. So this is very, very exciting. So I have a very special guest with me. Um, Ed McCaffrey and I have been met, actually, on the Rich Dad radio show. We've been on it together several times. And Ed is, I, I like to call Ed a fellow tax nerd. He's a professor at uh, USC, teaches tax down there, and absolutely brilliant because he agrees with me on so many things. Um, but truly, Ed is truly a, a tax expert, a tax policy expert. And uh, Ed, if you just give us just give us a, a, a one minute one minute background of what what you've been doing for the last couple of years. Okay, well, sure, Tom, and it's really it's very exciting to be joining you. And like you said, we we met on uh, Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad. We had some good chats there, and I 100 percent agree with your lead. in, Tom, I think this is going to be a very important show for anybody interested in wealth and building up wealth to listen to, we're really going to try to explain to you in like, you know, 10 or 15 minutes how to live a tax-free life. It's, it's, it's easy to do from a legal point of view. You know, it's going to take the discipline and hard work that, that, you know, life requires of people making money. But if you're, if you're willing to put in that, that hard work, there are certainly avenues in which you can basically pay nothing for your entire life. And in terms of that one minute of what I've been doing, I'm trying to get the word out there that uh, it, uh, I've, I've always been a fan of Robert Kiyosaki's work in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, because the central theme in Rich Dad, Poor Dad is don't be a wage slave. Don't get a W-2. If you get a W-2, you will be taxed. You will be taxed heavily. Nothing in the current law really changed that. So get out of the wage side. Get into the asset side. Buy assets. And then, you know, for the rest of uh, your show here today, Tom, you and I, in kind of a two-step way, are going to explain how if you're not getting a salary, you're not a, a wage slave, you're not getting a W-2, you don't have to pay taxes at all anymore. It, it, and, exactly. Um, it's so, exciting so, to be so, trying to, so, an evangelist for that idea. Uh, awesome. Exactly. So thank you, Ed. Thank you so much for being on the show. And it, it's, it's like you say, you're a wage slave, and the new tax law is a really... Um, just makes that more so. You and I were talking um, b before the show that the, the new tax law actually makes the wage, slave, wage slaves more taxable and the asset owners less taxable. Isn't that true? Absolutely right. Continuing a theme, if you think for a minute about the payroll tax, which is that sneaky little tax, a lot of W-2 people don't notice it, but that's a big tax. Well, that's a tax you pay on your wages. You don't have any deductions. It doesn't matter if you're married. It doesn't matter how many kids you have. Well, that's what the income tax is moving to. Every time they pass a law, they're getting rid of deductions. It's looking more and more like wages, and that's it. The forms are getting simpler, which is good news, but the noose is tightening around the neck of W-2 labor. Yeah, no, no question. We saw a lot of deductions go away. Um, uh, you know, even even so much that states are taking action to make sure that their the residents get some some deductions. But the reality is, is that when you're in the investment, when when you're making your money through investments, in other words, if if what you're doing is building true wealth, okay, building true wealth, not not worried about okay how much selling my selling my time for money, right? Which is what. Kiyosaki is always talking about, you know, don't sell your time for money. You know, that um, what you want to do, don't work for money, rather work for assets. And what we're going to learn today is, is that the more assets you have, actually the less tax you pay. 
The more assets you have, the less tax you pay. Now, when when Ed and I have been on the show with Robert, what I what I heard from Ed was, okay, the whole thing is buy, borrow, and die. So what I'm going to ask you to do, Ed, is if you would kind of walk through buy, borrow, die 101, and you know, and, and then that's for you know that applies to the stock investors and so forth. And then what we'll do is we'll we'll ramp it up a bit and we'll talk about how it applies, particularly with the new law, and how it can you can really ramp that up with real estate. So go ahead, Ed, and just give us a few minutes on buy, borrow, die 101. What does that even mean? Okay, great. Well, thank you, Tom, for that introduction. And anybody listening, those are the three words, and you're probably going to hear them enough in the next few minutes from Tom and me that you will remember them, but you can get out a piece of paper and write them down. Buy, B-U-Y, borrow, B-O-R-R-O-W, and then die, D-I-E. Now, each of those steps, buy, borrow, die, each of those words relates to a feature of American income tax law, a feature of American income tax law that has been there for a 100 years. And it's the key to the really tax-free living of the very wealthy. People from Warren Buffett to President Trump are using these principles. So let's go through it one at a time. Buy. This is actually Robert Kiyosaki's rule number one, and you heard Tom just talking about it. Buy assets. Buy an asset. Buy something that will go up in value. And in Tax Planning 101, Buy, Borrow, Die 101, let's buy an asset that's not going to produce any cash. Let's buy stock, Berkshire Hathaway stock, stock that doesn't pay a dividend. Let's buy your house, which is going to go up in value without producing cash. That's the buy step. And the buy step works because of the realization requirement, which has been around in the American tax laws for over 100 years. You don't pay tax on an asset until and unless you sell it or it otherwise produces cash. If you're just buying and holding, you're just owning your house, you're just owning Berkshire Hathaway, you're owning a sports franchise, and it's going up and up and up in value, you're not paying tax on that until you sell it. And in buy, borrow, die, there is no sell. So, so, so Ed, if I can... Buy, it, it, buy it, something that will go up in value without producing cash. Yeah, so, Tom. So, so, Ed, let me, let, me just, let me just interrupt for a second here. So we're not talking about your typical mutual funds, right? That actually you're taxed on them even if you didn't get the cash, okay? Because, you, you know, it, they, they, churned, they churned the stocks. And so now you're getting, you're getting these, this, this taxable gain, even though you've just held it. You're talking about, you're talking about a very, very specialized, you're buying either individual stocks or a group of stocks, or I understand you can do a, a certain type of ETF, but you're not, ta- uh, let's just be clear with our listeners, we're not talking about mutual funds here. That's basically correct, Tom. I mean, you're like a good listener, maybe pushing us a little bit above uh, Tax Planning 101, So in the simple case, you buy something, buy gold bullion, buy your house, buy a stock. And there are many, many stocks that don't uh, pay dividends. Berkshire Hathaway itself, which in some ways is like a mutual fund because Warren Buffett leading Berkshire Hathaway has just bought a whole bunch of other companies. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway has only paid one dividend since 1965. If you have Berkshire Hathaway stocks, you're playing this. Now, Tom, you're exactly right. Most mutual funds, that the owners, the managers of the mutual funds, the companies that run the mutual funds, they are buying and selling, and they're passing through the tax consequences of that. You can research and buy a tax-efficient mutual fund. You can buy an index fund where you pay relatively little tax. But Tom is exactly right. But what we're trying to do here really just in these few minutes, kind of like we're in a classroom – We want every listener to this call to understand buy, borrow, die, at least get the basics down. If you have further questions, you can follow up with Tom, and Tom Tom has a way to get in touch with me. So we're, we're available for answering. But right now, let's just say step one, you buy, and you do buy that Berkshire Hathaway stock, or you buy a bunch of gold bullion, uh, or you buy your own house, and it's going up in value. So you're becoming wealthier, you're happier, you can sleep better at night. But you're not paying tax because Uncle Sam is not taxing that so-called near appreciation. 
Now, step number two, step number one has given us this rise in value without cash. That's a lot of fun. It, it, it helps us be feel better about ourselves, but you can't really, you know, eat it. You can't, you can't take unrealized depreciation around the world. How do you get cash? And the answer is step two, you borrow. And again, ever since the history of the income tax, borrowing is not income. You don't pay tax when you borrow. You bought that home. It went up in value. You need some money. Take out a home equity loan. You have stock. It's going up in value. Take out a margin loan. Um, You have gold bullion. Find a way to borrow against gold bullion. So when you borrow, which President Trump does a great deal in his personal life, uh, when you borrow, you don't pay any tax on that. Right. So, okay? so, so let's let's two, talk about that borrow. just for a second on the, on the borrowing and think about why. Okay. I always want I always want our listeners to understand why the the reason that you don't pay tax when you borrow is because you have to pay it back. Okay. So it's not something that's yours without any obligation. You actually have an obligation at some point to pay that back. Which is, a, which is an important distinction. That's why if you sell it, you have to pay tax. You, as, as Ed says, you've realized it at that point. If you borrow against it or you use it to borrow, you can even do this with life insurance, by the way. You can borrow, use the life insurance as collateral, borrow that money, and that borrowing doesn't get taxed. On top of that, depending on what you use the money for, you might even get a t- an interest deduction. But that's that's beyond 101. So, Ed, what happens after we, okay, we bought. Yeah. But that was a good intervention, Tom. And I think, you know, I, I, as we're sort of going through the very basics of buy, borrow, die, we've talked about stock and how a growth stock and non-dividend paying stock is the perfect case and mutual funds a little more complicated. I've been throwing out houses and houses can come in terms of using the money in the borrow step. You can take out a home equity loan. You can do a reverse mortgage, which is borrowing against the equity in your home. You don't pay it back until you die. You pay it back by giving your your house to the bank um, on your death, and there's no tax involved in that step. You just brought up another important example, which is life insurance, not term insurance, but whole life insurance that has a cash value Life insurance is a beautiful buy, borrow, die product. You give money to the insurance company. They invest it. It rises in value, but you don't pay tax on it. You can borrow against it when you need to eat or live or have some fun. And then you're not going to pay that off until you die when the loan will be paid off out of the uh, proceeds of the insurance policy. So back on track, we have the three steps, buy, and another thing Tom said that was very important, borrowing is not income because borrowing in and of itself doesn't change your net worth. You have to pay it back, as Tom said. But that's the beauty of the three steps. In step one, we've made wealth without cash. We've made wealth without taxable income as our assets go up in value. In step two, if you look at step two in isolation, When you borrow money, that's no big deal from the government's point of view because you're supposed to pay it back. But now we're borrowing money because we're wealthy, and we're wealthy because our assets went up in value, and no tax has been paid in this story. So step one, buy. Step two, borrow. And then we beautifully go to, Tom, you really set us up for this. We go to where we all end up at death. We're all going to die We can all rejoice at that prospect because we're going to get a stepped up basis, which means that the assets we got in step one by can now be sold tax free by our children or our spouses um, tax free and our debts can be paid off tax free. We've completed the loop. So whether it's selling your house or giving your house back to the bank to pay off the home equity loan, selling the stocks to pay off the margin loans, or simply getting the life insurance proceeds and have some of them go back to pay off your debt, we've closed out the loop. Buy, borrow, die. You've never paid any tax in your lifetime your heirs are not going to face any tax as they get started on their life. 
They can sell your assets, pay off your debts, and with what's left over, do it again. Buy, borrow, die. Exactly, and you create you create uh, general, generational now, wealth out of that. Really tax planning 101, buy, borrow, die. It works with gold bullion. It works with the house. It works with non-dividend paying stock. Tom, you and I have talked many times, and this is where I'm so grateful to be you know, kind of part of this team with you. Because buy, borrow, die also works for real estate investors, and it, but it, for real estate people, there is some cash. Right now, so you need an additional step of making sure you don't pay tax on that cash, and then when you look outside of your cash flow and your reported income, you have the assets that are rising in value, and just like President right. Trump does, you can borrow against your valuable so, so, assets. So let's tax-free. let's walk through that. Ed. So that's let, what we're Ed, calling tax so, planning. Right. Exactly. So well, let, you, and Tom, you really know more about that than I so, do. So let's let's talk about that for a second, Ed. And so first of all, remember when you die, you, you, you know, one of the questions, well, yeah, but don't I pay an estate tax? And one of the great things out of this new law is that, yeah, no, you don't pay an estate tax because now we have a twenty-two million dollar estate tax exclusion. So that's right with, for, for a married couple. For a married, married couple, couple and eleven million dollars for an individual. So, so yeah. what we have is we have no income tax when we die. We get rid of the income tax, and for most people, we're not going to have an estate tax. And, and and the reality is, with good estate planning, nobody should ever be paying estate tax anyway. That's we we sometimes uh, Ed, we sometimes refer to that in our office, estate tax as the stupid tax, because you really yeah. you, it's just a lack of planning if you're paying if you're paying any estate tax. But let's well, let's, that's exactly right, Tom. I think Gary Cohn, the former economic advisor to President Trump, called it the moron tax. I well, called there it you the go. voluntary tax. But really, to keep it on the focus of what we're talking about today, and so, buy, borrow, die, buy, borrow, die is also an estate planning strategy. So because the debt, that tax you're talking about, what Tom was talking about, $22 million for a couple, if, if you die, $11 million for an individual. If you die and your net worth as a couple is under $22 million, you're not paying any estate tax. Well, suppose you do what Tom's talking about, what Robert Kiyosaki is talking about, what I'm talking about. You bought assets, and the assets have gone up fabulously in value. They've gone up to $50 million. Congratulations. Well, guess what? You borrowed $30 million to live a good life, and when you die, you have $50 million worth of assets. $30 million from step one, buy. $30 $30 million worth of debt from step two, borrow, your kids get the 50, sell it tax-free, pay off the 30. There's no estate tax in that situation because the estate tax is on your assets minus your liability. So a very simple way to avoid the estate tax is borrow money and have fun. Exactly. So let's now, now what I want to go to is we're going to step this up to 201. Okay, this is Buy, Borrow, Die 201. I'm going to walk you through, by the way, this is in Tax-Free Wealth, uh, my book. Um, and by the way, we, our second edition of Tax-Free Wealth is now out, which includes all of the updates for the new tax law, the, the Trump tax law. So bonus depreciation is a big deal in the new tax law. Bonus depreciation basically says this. If you buy a rental property, then you get to deduct immediately everything except everything you bought except for the land and the building. You're going, well, what else did I buy? Well, you bought the contents of the building and you bought the land improvements like the, like the landscaping and the covered parking and the outdoor lighting. All of that you bought along with the building and the land and all of that gets deducted. So on average, we would expect an average purchase to be about 30% deductible. So you go buy a million dollar building, now you're talking about a 30% deduction. Okay, now let's say we go down the road and your that property has gone from 1 million to 2 million and you go, you know what, I don't even like this property anymore. Well, here's the advantage in real estate. The advantage real estate has that the other, ty- the, the stocks, for the most part, don't have is I can still sell that real estate even though there's a gain on it and not pay tax. And this is what's called a 1031 or like kind exchange. So let's say, let's say I started my investing. I bought a bunch of single family homes and duplexes and fourplexes. I'm tired of managing all those properties. And what I want to do is I want to sell them and I want to buy two big apartment buildings. Great. 
sell them, buy two big apartment, apartment buildings. As long as you meet the rules for 1031, you're okay. You're going, yeah, but I need cash. Okay, so Ed, when you need cash, what do you do? You borrow. You borrow. Yeah, step two. That's it. You just you just borrow. So remember, you've bought, bought, bought. Now you're in this case, you can actually sell, buy the new property. Then you borrow again. You keep borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. That's just fine. Eventually, let's say someday you go, I'm tired of the apartments. I just want what I call mailbox money. I'd like what's called, we call it a triple net lease, where the tenant pays for everything except the mortgage. All you have to do is get the rent check every month. Now, several big companies do this. Walgreens, all the Walgreens stores, they're all owned by investors, okay? That's a triple net lease. They're, best cre they're the best creditor in the world, right? They're better than, and some people think they're better than the U.S. government. They're such a good, they're, they're such a good creditor. Or, or Walmart or Safeway. A lot of these big ones do these, um, what we call a sale leaseback. So now you own the Walgreens. You're getting mailbox money. Great. Now you die. Now what happens when you die, Ed? Stepped up basis on debt. Step up basis on debt. What, what, what do your kids do? They, they sell the Walgreens because they want to party. And they're going to they're gonna party hardy. Or you put it into a trust so that they can't do that. But it gets a stepped up basis in, in, in death anyway. And now you eliminated the income tax. You probably, if you've done good estate planning, you have no estate tax. And that's why the new tax law really soups up. That's why I wanted you to have on, Ed, because, because the new tax law with the bonus depreciation especially just kind of soups up your buy, borrow, die. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And what you've just uh, done there, Tom, is you've shown, I mean, I think in general, you asked me before, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get across this idea of buy, borrow, die, and that the basics of tax are actually relatively simple. That's something I don't think politicians want you to know. I'm not sure that that's something that accountants and lawyers and professionals always want you to know. H&R Block knows it. You know, for most Americans, taxes are pretty simple. There's a big divide between wealth and wages. People with wages, you're facing a kind of onerous wage tax system with fewer and fewer exits. But on the wealth side, on the asset side, it really does come down to buy, borrow, die. That's the, that's the basics. That, that's why Warren Buffett pays almost no tax. That's why President Trump, in many years, pays no tax. They're playing buy, borrow, die. And the basics of buy, borrow, die are very simple. Buy assets, borrow against the unrealized appreciation, and die. Um, don't really have to plan to die. It just happens. Now, what Tom just did was show, okay, well, that works. That works if you have gold bullion. That works with your own house. That works with cash value, life insurance policies. That works with growth stocks. But sometimes that asset that you have is throwing money at you. And that's a good thing because you like money, but when the asset throws money at you, the government sees that money. So now we're talking about investments. Really, you bought things. You're not working for wages. You're working for yourself. You're building up sweat equity. But the, your assets are producing cash, which the government could tax. What do you do? And the answer to that is you look for opportunities to get deductions against your cash against your income. The interest on your debt is a deduction. And what Tom was just talking about, and it's absolutely right, it's a big souping up. It's a big steroid effect to buy, borrow, die for real estate. When you, you get to take depreciation deductions, and bonus depreciation deductions are essentially immediate deductions. So you buy a million dollar uh, investment property, you get a million dollar deduction. Exactly. So those you're going to use those deductions to offset your cash flow to show as little income to the federal government as possible. Meantime, so, so Ed, you still own your assets. So Ed, let me let, 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 let's think about this. Leasing out, you hey, still hey. own your asset. Your asset is still going up in value over time, and you can play buy, borrow, die by borrowing against your assets. Yes. dying with both assets and debt and letting your heirs, whether they're going to party or not, figure out the rest. So, so Ed, let's think about this. So here, here's what's great about what they did, what, what real estate does with the borrowing. So let's say you don't even borrow the money out. Let's say what you're doing is borrowing to buy in the first place. 
So you borrow mm-hmm. to buy yep. in the first place and you get the depreciation deduction for the bank's money. You get the depreciation deduction for the bank's money. So if you're if you're doing good, if you're leveraging, if you're using other people's money, the reality is if you are a serious real estate investor, you should never, ever be paying taxes on your cash flow because your depreciation will be so high and you're continuing to buy buy more real estate that you're going to end up with more and more assets. This is why we say the more assets you have, the less taxes you pay. And it doesn't matter. You can just keep doing this. You decide, okay, the market's changed. Okay, apartment buildings are really hot right now, right? So we're going to sell the apartment buildings and we're going to go buy um, a healthcare facility or, or something completely different. That's okay in real estate. It is uh, something that about real estate that is, is uh, unique to real estate in a lot of ways is that yep. you can actually sell yep. it, realize the gain, and buy another piece of real estate, and it doesn't have to be the same type of real estate. It just has to be in the country, right? Just have to be in the same. Just you, you, you got to sell U.S. real estate and buy U.S. real estate, or sell buy foreign real estate and sell foreign real estate. You can do that too, but you just can't buy uh, U.S. real estate and then and then sell it and then buy foreign real estate. So it's it's actually fairly simple. You do need to walk through this stuff with a good tax advisor. Okay, don't ever do this stuff on your own. But I really appreciate that. We, you know, our time's up now, but it's been great having you on the show to really walk through very simply. You can make massive amounts of wealth, never pay any taxes. Like you say, Warren Buffett does it. Donald Trump's done it. And on top of that, you could even have, frankly, if, if let's say one of you, your, your spouse, you or your spouse is a wage slave, with the bonus depreciation, you could end up still not paying any taxes on the wages. So there's so much. There's so many advantages here to being a professional investor. So many advantages to the buy, borrow, die, and add just final words. Well, yeah, I think my final word is thank you and thank all your listeners. I think, Tom, you're doing great work. And this is the key move, you know, for all of our if, – if there is a chance in your life for yourself, for your spouse, for your children – to get out of just being a W-2 employee and, and make your own wealth and invest, that's the ticket to the future. Wealth is winning, wages are losing. So thank you, Tom. It's always my pleasure, and uh, hopefully all the listeners learned as much as I learned just from being on the phone with you. Well, thank you, Ed, and thanks, everybody else. Remember, when <laughs> it's, it's totally possible, go to, go to WealthAbility.com. We're always showing you how to make way more money, pay way less taxes. As an additional thank you, I want to give a special gift just to our podcast listeners to help you jumpstart your journey to building massive wealth tax-free. This is a group of not just one, but five of my top educational resources on this topic. There are several amazing, helpful PDF downloads and two training videos. These resources are not available and we don't give them away anywhere else, so Get these bonuses now. All you have to do is go to wealthability.com slash gift. That's wealthability.com forward slash G-I-F-T and get these gifts to jumpstart your wealth now. You've been listening to The Wealth Ability Show with Tom Wheelwright. Way more money, way less taxes. To learn more, go to wealthability.com.